Welcome. You're tuned to the Urban Affairs Program. It's time to get up for Urban Perspectives with your host, Pete Rhodes. Welcome, you're watching Urban Perspectives. This edition is sponsored in part by UCARE and BMANetworks.com. I'm your host, Pete Rhodes. On this episode, we'll style up as we present three outstanding fashion designers featuring Raquel Redmond, Tim Plus Tom, and Samantha Ray. Their creations will provide you with options to look your best in style. Join us as we hit the runway right here on Urban Perspectives. My first guest began her journey in the fashion world designing headbands and hats and headpieces in the Hollywood Teals in 2008. Today she has a full line of clothing based out of Minneapolis entitled Anale Ukor. Designs have been published in national magazines and are worn by models around the world. Her model is Style to Stand Out. Please welcome to Urban Perspective, Perspective, shall I say, designer Raquel Redman. <laughs> Raquel, how are you doing? I'm good. How good, are you? Good, good. You know, um, when we first was reading about what you, how you started and with the headbands, it was so intriguing on, mm -hmm. on how you used to do that. And offset, we talked a little bit about how you used to put it all together for the mm -hmm. designers at various fashion shows. I'm sure that was fun and exciting and uh, yes. yeah, it's the first time. So thanks for being here. Let me start off by asking you, how do you categorize your design style and, and, and what is your mission behind what you do? Um, I think me specifically, you know, I really gear my, myself towards uh, musicians and artists and dancers. Um, I'm a musician myself, so I related that um, through my art and mm -hmm. making clothing. So then um, I just, um, I created a very um, performance ready um, line and clothing and then um, with my musicians I just create a full style for them each individually. Yeah we talked yeah. about as well too how uh, fashions repeat themselves mm -hmm. uh, so as you're creating these uh, styles for these musicians and artists they work well like we gather with just everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah yep. yeah, fantastic. they do. Now who has influenced you uh, uh, Raquel and your approach uh, to fashion design and, and why? Have you had any influences out there? I've had a lot of influence. I'd say, you know, really everybody who's been in my life and really supported me. Um, I have a lot of great people around me, my clients, um, you know, everybody that supports me and is in part of my team or um, has been there for me in any kind of way, really, it just, um, it empowers me and motivates me and um, always opens my eyes to brand new things right. and yeah. keeps me going. Yeah, that's cool, yeah. that's cool. So how would you rate your uh, Twin Cities, uh, uh, rate us here in the Twin Cities, shall I say, in terms of fashion? And are there unique opportunities to provide it for you to launch and do what you do? Yes, I think, um, I don't know about rating, <laughs> you know, I love, I love the Twin Cities, I know, um, I moved here about five years ago and from the time I moved here it's really built and yeah. um, that progression's been amazing to just see and be a part of um, but I feel like um, you know there's obviously more more we can do here and more we can push forward and um, make it a 10. Yeah, make so it a 10. We're on our way to a 10. <laughs> I yep. like that. Now, you're participating in Inspiring Beauty, the 50 Years of the Ebony Fashion yes. Fair, which is coming up over mm -hmm. at the uh, exhibit at the Minnesota History Center. Uh, what will you be uh, doing in that program? So for that, um, I'm super excited about it, I want to say. Sure you are. Um, <laughs> um, but I'm doing a Joseph Bean Baker inspired outfit, the banana skirt. Wow. Um, I'm obviously putting my own little twist, so you'll have to come there and see it. Yeah, um, yeah. But then, um, and then I'm also doing one that is inspired um, kind of more so by who I am in my line, but geared more towards something maybe Rihanna would wear or Beyonce or, you know, one of those artists, you know, that have an extreme, amazing, different style. Mm -hmm. so. uh, uh, Anna Lay Okur, where did that come from? That's actually my first and middle name backwards. Oh, really? My name's Raquel Ann, so Anna Lay Okur. Yeah. Oh. Backwards, yep. It had to mean something. Yep. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Sounds fancy. <laughs> do you like collaborating? And if you do, uh, what would be your dream collaboration? Hmm. Yeah, I love collaborating. Really, every single artist that I work with, every musician, is a collaboration together because I love to hear what they have to say and they have such artistic minds. We mm -hmm. can collaborate together. So, um, 
I pro the list is probably too long probably to go yeah, over, yeah, but you know, yeah. a lot of the mainstream artists and, um, and some underground artists, you know, I really have my eyes on and um, gear my designs towards. Oh, yeah, that's great. So, uh, so Prince would be one of them. Like, definitely, uh, could, uh, you know, definitely. Yep. Yeah, so there's a whole so a host of it. Uh, I have lots of velvet yeah, prints. Lots of velvet. Okay. <laughs> I, like I guess lastly, I would say, how have uh, being in the fashion world uh, helped you, Raquel? As a person. As a person. Um, it has helped me really express myself, um, and through every, all of my journeys and what I've done, it's really um, shown me how important it is to really love you and, and do what you love to do, because that's really the only way to love yourself, is to make sure that um, you're always happy and you always love exactly what you're doing. Well, I can tell from your designs and what you're doing and your progression overall that you love what you're doing, which is so important. Yep. And uh, we look forward to seeing much, much more from Raquel Redmond and your line. And uh, look forward to seeing you also in the 50 years inspiring yes. beauty over there at the Minnesota History Center. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Raquel Redmond, one of our <laughs> fantastic designers here in the Swedish cities here. Weekly here on Urban Perspectives, we present Shining Stars, highlighting people, places, and events that contribute to the vibrancy of the urban community. Now, this week, Shining Star has won multiple awards for Best Actor in Theater. He has appeared in many of the Twin City plays around the city and is returning to perform in the play Detroit 67 at the Fame Penumbra Theater. His one-man play, A Brown Tale, was listed number three on Star Tribune's Top 10 Twin Cities Productions. And also 16 million weekly viewers have watched him on the hit TV series, Empire, where he plays the uh, guy uh, from the studio, Tyree. Meet our shining star, James T. Alfred. How you doing? I'm James T. Alfred, actor, Chicago native. I am the writer, producer, and performer of the critically acclaimed hit show, A Brown Tale, a one-person show that I, I wrote. I've been coming to the Twin Cities now for about uh, eight years. Uh, you probably remember me from Red Shirts, it was a world premiere about uh, football players and the politics that goes in being uh, a collegiate athlete. Uh, and then I came back, I did Fences with uh, James Austin Williams. And that was followed with uh, Two Trains Running. I also did Levy from Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And then I'm, I'm back now to do a play called Detroit 67. As far as television is concerned, I'm currently in a recurring role on uh, Fox's new hit, Empire, where I play Tyree. Most people probably recognize me from eating all that cereal. But it's, it's been great. It's been great uh, just to be a part of something so big um, that I didn't expect it to pop like that. I think when you look uh, at work as being an extension of yourself, you try to find something that's going to be fulfilling. And in and, and doing that, it, it's going to ask you uh, how much you're willing to pay. And you have to be willing to, to pay the price to actualize and, and realize that, that dream, if you would. But I think um, in order to make the dream a reality, it has to first be a dream and then it has to become a goal. And then you have to set a plan to uh, to making those, uh, set those plans to making those goals uh, a reality, uh, reaching those goals. And if I can sum it up into two things, it's, it's, it's belief, uh, uh, which is faith, and, um, and, and, and having the ability to stick to it until you get there. Don't quit. Hey, this is James T. Alfred, actor. I'm currently appearing in Penumbra Theaters, Detroit 67, and you're watching Urban Perspectives. Thank you, James. On this edition of Styled Up, we'll meet true Minnesota twins who are outstanding designers that collaborate to create personality and confidence through their styles. Join me for a fashion conversation next with Tim plus Tom on Urban Perspectives. Welcome back to Urban Perspectives. Our next guest goal is to create clothes that enhance personality and invoke confidence in the wearer, and also bring healthy resources for other designers helping to grow the local fashion community. Blood Brothers, Tim, is a former Project Runway contestant known for his tailor-forward designs, while Tom's passion for fashion focuses on the entire package. Please welcome to Urban Perspectives this dynamic duo, 
Tim plus Tom. How you guys doing? This <laughs> We're doing well. Doing good. Good. Thank good. you for the introduction. Yeah, yeah, great you guys introduction. are fun, man. <laughs> uh, we sent out the uh, questions. You said, hey, rearrange these a little bit. <laughs> so uh, I, li I like the feedback. And so I'm going to just start right off with part of your question. It says, <laughs> gentlemen, uh, when did your passion for fashion really begin? And, and how do you use it to, um, and what is your role in the the cult uh, creative uh, collective that's here to the help grow the community so um well to start i guess our passion for fashion began when tom started making money designing clothes yeah yeah exactly we've always sewn since we were kids we're self-taught yeah. um but it just kind of took off when we were here in Minneapolis for mm. college and trying to make money on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. once Tim saw me doing something, he was like, well, if he can do it, I can do it. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, our relationship is competitive. Yeah. But it just keeps going like this, so. Yeah. 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 Well, speaking of which, um, you guys do a lot uh, with the uh, cult collective here for Correct. the fashion industry yep. to help kind of broaden that. Uh, yeah. What do you do in that? How you, what is your role? Well, so cult collective is a collective of experienced uh, designers, event producers, art directors, mm -hmm. and we've gathered our resources to curate cultural, uh, culturally stimulating events, mm -hmm. tastemaker events That's great. that mm -hmm. um, really kind of strengthen and build our like local craft communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can get up to that top ten status that uh, yeah. Jill was talking about. Well, exactly. we like to, with the Cult Collective, try to bring awareness to um, many realms not just the fashion realm mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. try to broaden all of our horizons That's yeah and so what awareness. we specifically contribute is um like ideation relationship building and then we also just you know we bring the fashion element yeah. so. <laughs> so tom how does your uh designs e e evoke the confidence and the wear that you're working for tom? a lot of what i do is custom clothing um so when i start the process we really talk about who the who this character is, who this person is, mm -hmm. and how um, how they want to represent themselves, you know, to the public. Uh -huh. And really, with my clothes, we it's more about um, the personality than the outfit. And so it's, it helps to get involved in, uh, and closer to the uh, to person, uh, exactly. understand their personality. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now you were uh, Tim on the uh, fashion. Runway, uh, the Project, uh, Runway. Project Runway, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, can tell us a little bit about that experience. How was sure. it? Does it help you now? Um, <laughs> you know, it was a really intense experience. Yeah. It was, it was very fast, uh, fast-paced. I think what I learned about myself and my experience in the run uh, on Project Runway was that, you know, it, for that kind of environment, it doesn't. It's not just about your skill level okay. it's about attitude but one thing that I did take away the major takeaway was that I a self-taught designer mm -hmm. um, have the chops have the experience and the fortitude uh, to be nationally ranked mm -hmm. with a bunch of really talented designers yeah. so it gave me a lot of confidence and it gave me kind of a reassurance of what I'm doing here at home is gonna help build mm -hmm. um, Local, build local talent. Yeah, and a, a lot of community. drama backstage. Um, <laughs> actually, you know, from my experience, there wasn't much. It was no, very, it was good. a really welcoming community. That's good. Yeah. It's a great show. It's a great show. Yeah. You represented well. Now, Tim, uh, how does your designs uh, accentuate the, a client's personality? And, and explain well, what tailored forward means. So tailored forward, my experience uh, as a designer comes from tailoring. Mm -hmm. I basically got myself into the alterations business, into the tailoring business. So mm -hmm. my formative years were tailoring. Oh, I see. So basically construction, the rules of and the science of designing okay. were learned through that and that's what I use to create my my collections, my look for, for oh, that client. Oh, and much like Tom, I build a relationship with my client before we move forward mm -hmm. so then I understand what they're doing. They're looking for. Mm -hmm. Now Tom, tell us about your signature event that uh, you and Tim's signature event that comes up the uh, Black Heart Ball. Oh, the Black Hearts Ball is definitely a passion project of ours. Yeah. Um, it's a 
high class uh, cocktail party, it's basically. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Formal affair featuring all fans of, or I'm sorry, not featuring, but <laughs> <laughs> um, welcoming all fans of fashion and opera. We yeah. try to mix the opera into sort of reculturize our community, yeah. our, the it younger done? community. Um, it usually takes place during, or in February, February. like during the fashion yeah. week, yeah. Yeah. Um, our fashion now week. What's yeah. the f what is in the time we have left, what does the future look like for you guys? Where are you going? Well, we hope, <laughs> I, I, speaking for both of us, we, right. <laughs> we see Timpless Town being a resource for local designers, either to use our resources to help produce an event for them, mm -hmm. or to collaborate with them to kind of bring out their more creative and hopeful ideas about presenting their collections. Mm -hmm. you guys are fun. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much for you. the work that you're <laughs> doing you. in this community, and uh, we look forward to a lot more from you in the future, okay? Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks, God. Yeah. Next on Urban Perspectives, as we style up, we'll meet a designer whose creation embodies the sweetness and femininity that has come to be expected in her fashions. Join me and designer Samantha Ray next on Urban Perspectives. My next guest started her fashion career in 2000 with Blasphema's Closet. In 2013, she started a signature label, Samantha Ray. Her creations draw inspiration from illustrators like Chris Riddle, Brom, Brett, uh, Brett Hellquist, as well as stories like Alice in Wonderland and Snow White. She's City Page's 2014 Artist of the Year, whose designs make women feel confident, strong, and comfortable. Please welcome to Urban Perspectives, designer Samantha Ray. How are you doing, Samantha? I'm awesome. How are you? Blasphemas. Blasphemina. Blasphemina. Yes. How did you come up with that? <laughs> I was a goth kid in high school, and I wanted to be controversial, oh, so okay. it was a... Uh, and trip it up was, announcers, huh? Yeah, I know. It's the worst. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a throwback to an inside joke my brother and I had uh -huh. when we were doing a comic book together, oh, so... <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. When did you uh, know you were, you wanted to be in this fashion world thing, uh, Samantha? Um, weirdly, growing up, I wanted to be a children's book illustrator, and then okay. when I was a little older, I wanted to be a comic illustrator. So I was illustrating all the time, and when I was about 13, my brother and I used to watch Saturday morning cartoons, mm -hmm. and he and my dad would go do whatever they would do. And the fashion shows would be on right. after, it was like video fashion, and FT would be on after Saturday morning cartoons, and I was like, wait. I can I do I that. Like and I started that. illustrating, and I was like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah, so. So that's so cool. Now, how did you start the to um, the creation of Samantha Ray's pieces? I mean, when you when you start working on a piece, how do you start? Is it with the illustration first, or what way do you go? Sort of. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of an all-encompassing feeling. When I make a collection, I try to tell a story. Mm. And I want to have people feel what I feel when I was conceiving it. Okay. So what I do is I have a specific album that I listen to. I've been doing this since mm. probably 05. Okay. And I will drive up and down Theodore Worth Parkway wow. until I have an idea. Interesting. And then I pull to the side of the road and I start sketching. And I start sketching. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? Now what is the difference uh, uh, in your inspiration and approach to designing fashion for men? Because you also do men clothing as well. I think because I know my client. My client is a lot like me. She's brave, but she's... Um, She's kind of subtle, and she, she likes to wear a conversation starter, but not necessarily be the annoying center of attention. She I wants see. to be the genuine center of attention. Okay. And I feel like a lot of men want that, but they're scared of it. Mm -hmm. And so I have to try and find a way to encourage them to kind of break out of their shell and do something interesting. Oh, okay. uh, so I usually kind of design a little bit outside of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wear this, and you will be confident. Pretty much. <laughs> I like it. Now, have, you've been uh, selected, uh, and how will you be participating now that you have been selected in Inspiring mm -hmm. 50 Years of Ebony Fashion Fair? Um, it's coming to the History Center, as we know. What will you do in that? I'm going to be showing two pieces inspired by Josephine Baker. Mm -hmm. um, my most recent collection, Black Pearl, was inspired by 1920s Shanghai, so I'm going to kind of stick with the 1920s feel. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to do two pieces that are fairly 20s in silhouette, but like later 20s, kind of going into the 30s. Mm -hmm. I got this beautiful imported African fabric that looks like mermaid scales, yeah, so yeah. we're going to kind of go with like an aqua look. Yeah. But so got to learn 30s, a lot of... Josephine Baker, that's a historic individual. Yeah. How do we capture that? <sighs> I did a lot of research about her as a person, and 
until during the height of her being a sex symbol, mm -hmm. she was just really confident and she just didn't really care what anyone had to say about her. Yeah. And she was really brave in her fashion choices. So I want to do something that's that. Yeah. What is your most significant, in your mind's eye, uh, creation, and what's on your bucket list still to go? I think it would probably be my collection, Second Star, from a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. It's it's the one that still kind of tugs at my heartstrings a little bit. Yeah. It embodied nostalgia and childhood whimsy. It was mm -hmm. inspired by The Little Prince and Peter Pan. Okay. Um, I just sometimes I just listen to the music and yeah, yeah um, and my bucket list. Weirdly, <laughs> I actually got to meet a designer that I've looked up to since I um, since I started my label. Mm -hmm. I got to meet him last year, and he really liked my stuff. So I would love to do a collaboration with him. Okay. And then on a completely selfish note, I totally want to design a line of Monster High dolls. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. That's, I like to see that. Um, that you, your work is just fantastic. I, I really do like the femininity that you Thank bring you. to uh, your pieces, and particularly for women. And uh, so my last question to you, how was it when you were announced for 2014 as City Pages uh, big time star designer? It was crazy. I was completely shocked because yeah. I, I don't usually make lists like that. And mm -hmm. so when they're like, by the way, this you're on this list, I was like, stop, you're messing with yeah. me. And I looked because there's a lot of artists on that list. Yes, and there were you know painters and uh, actors and comedians. And I was the only designer. And I was mm -hmm. like, wait. But me? Why? Yeah. <laughs> so I was really flattered and really humbled, but it so was exciting. In the, in the Twin Cities, real quickly, uh, when you uh, look at our scene, uh, how do you see it? And uh, do you see it uh, going stronger with what's happening today? I feel like we have the potential to be what Chicago was 10 years ago as mm -hmm. far as new talent. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many interesting new designers that aren't just getting awesome and then moving away. Mm -hmm. They're staying here and trying to nurture the scene. Great. Um, most of us like hang out socially, like we all really like each other. Mm -hmm. And so we're always trying to encourage each other and there's all these events all the time. So it's just kind of always in the forefront. Yeah, it's yeah. good stuff. They're all great. Well, keep doing what you're doing, Samantha. I really like what you're doing and apparently many others do as well. <laughs> thank you. Samantha Ray, thank you for being it was here. It's great to meet all you. All right, all right. Thank you for watching Urban Perspective as well. I would like to thank my sponsors, You Care Healthcare that starts with you, BMANetworks.com, my guests, our shining star, and you, the audience, of course, for getting up with Urban Perspectives. Visit our website at urbanperspectives.tv for information on our guests and where you can find links to previous broadcasts. And you can help us grow by liking our Facebook page. And remember, there are so many amazing people and positive stories in our cities. Watch for them right here on Urban Perspectives. Now enjoy the photos of the week featuring the Delta Sorority Annual Luncheon. I'm Pete Rhodes and I'll see you next week.